Hi, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, my guest is Eugene Human, a piano player and composer. And Eugene is the director of the Vermont Jazz Center and also has spent a lot of time in Medellin, Colombia, where he started a jazz program. Welcome, Eugene Human, to the World Fusion Show. Thank you very much, Derek. It's great to be here. I'm so glad you could join us today. Yeah. So great. So I wanted to just start with a little of your background. Okay. How did you get started in music? Well, I was fortunate that I've been um, musical ever since I was a kid. My parents noticed that and they gave me piano lessons starting at age six mm -hmm. and I kind of stuck with that. Um, getting out of it in high school because I, I wasn't into the whole classical thing and right, then getting right. back into it once I realized that that was an option. Mm -hmm. And so then um, I, I continued to be uh, active in the music until uh, I went to forestry school at age uh, 18. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and then, but I continued actually to play in the big band and, and to have gigs and that kind of a thing. And then I was a forester for 10 years. Wow. And then, and so then, got to know the raccoons and porcupines really well, right? Yeah, they're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, at age 30, I went back to school mm. to get my master's in jazz performance. Right. And since then, I haven't looked back. I've just yeah. done music exclusively. Now, you've worked with a lot of great people, I know. And, yeah, very fortunate and, and, for that. Well, it's a tremendous opportunity when we get that in yeah. our lives. So tell me about what the, who you worked with and what that meant to you. Yeah, well, you know, my mentor, my main mentor was Howard Brofsky, yeah. you know, and he's the reason why I actually ended up at the Vermont Jazz Center sure. because he heard me playing up in the hills of Bethel and or actually it was in White River Junction. And he said, wow, you might be uh, interested in coming into my program. Mm -hmm. And so he was somebody then he hooked me up with Jimmy Heath and, and I got to be friends with Sheila Jordan right. and Jerry Berganzi. Uh, and Donald Byrd was one of my teachers and he hired me. I got to do some gigs with him. Yeah. Um, I've been very fortunate also to have some really wonderful musicians in this area, in, in the area and in, in southern Vermont and in the, the central Massachusetts area. I play with some top level people and there's such great grooves and the 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 level continues to rise. Yeah. People are just getting better and better in this area and I just feel proud to be a part of it. Well, you know, I always tell people as a teacher, if you can get play with the best people. Absolutely. People who are better than you, yeah. <laughs> who will tolerate you, right, right. you know, and you just learn so much yeah. from that. It's by osmosis, yes. it's something that happens, right? Don't you yeah. think? Well, in my albums, I, I've got, you know, Satoshi and Stomu Takaishi who are just world-class as well as Basin Eugene Freeze. And yes, yeah. yes, yes. And so I, I, I agree with that premise and I surround myself with those people and including you, Derek. Oh, well, thank you, Eugene. <laughs> That's very nice of you. Yeah. I would like to go to the first video clip. Um, you spent a lot of time in Medellin, Colombia. That's correct. And this piece, one of my favorites of yours. Thank you. Is La Luna is based on a Colombian, a Colombian form. Want to yeah. tell us about that? Right, well, um, when I was living in Colombia, I spent four years living in Colombia. My wife is Colombian. Our two children were born there. And uh, when I was there, I started uh, the music program at a place called El Colegio de la Musica. And then also I had the opportunity to initiate the jazz studies program at La Universidad de la IAFI. Mm -hmm. So in two different places, I started the jazz program and right. became very good friends with Colombian musicians. Right. And one of my friends had this beautiful place out on this island. Nice. And we, he invited me there for a vacation. So we would play these pasillos, which is this kind of a classical form, which is, it's A-A-B-B-C-C-A. -B -B -C -C That's the form. Okay. And uh, we but would- But it's in nine eight. Well, <laughs> it, it's, I think about it in three. You could think about it in yeah, nine. Three triplets. Yeah. yeah um, and and um, we, we would just play these old standard pasillos, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and one night we were doing it by the light of the moon. Mm. And it was just me and this, and my, my friend played guitar and another friend played guitar. I was playing melodica mm. and, um, and another friend was playing clarinet. And mm. we just, we would, every night that was our thing. We How would cool. just hang out. And so I wrote a song to pay tribute to those wonderful evenings spent together called Isla Luna. And a beautiful song it is. Let's go to the video.
<laughs> Boy, I love that tune. And what a great band. Yeah. Want to introduce those guys? Yeah, well, that's the Convergence Project, and yeah. that's the, the latest iteration, which includes a different bass player and drummer, because I, I wanted to play more. So mm -hmm. Stomu and Satoshi being in New York, I couldn't play yeah. local gigs. So I found two younger musicians who were really into learning the skills yeah. of, of how to play Colombian music. So John Fisher on the drums and David Peachy on the bass. And of course, my stalwart companions on the uh, the trombone, that's Jeff Galindo, and, on the, and the saxophone player is Michael Zoldas. That's Great. the Convergence Project, yeah. and we have two albums out together. That's really fabulous. So there is a very long and rich history of world fusion, Latin music, and jazz, mm -hmm. right? I mean, going back to Cal Chater, sure. Mongo Santa Maria, Dizzy Gillespie, a right. bunch of people, many, many right, more. Right. But one of my personal favorites is you might be surprised to know, is Leonard Bernstein, who... <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I'm very surprised. Because of West Side Story. Okay. And what he did with Stephen Sondheim in writing that. Right. And really a truly unique, I think, fusion mm -hmm. of this jazz and classical and um, Latin music right. that he brought together. Right. Um, so you've spent a lot of time in Colombia. Right. And what is it... What have you? What do you pick up there? What does it mean to you? What does it feel like to be influenced by mm -hmm. that music? Well, I, we could really get into the whole thing about <laughs> like the influences of Latin music on jazz and Dizzy Gillespie and Mario Bausa and all those. There's a and lot. It's 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 a venerable tradition, mm -hmm. and Colombian music was something that is not quite as recognized as being um, a significant musical source. Uh, as it was influencing jazz. But when I was living there, I met a guy named Antonio Arnedo, who's probably the leading saxophone player living in, in, in Bogota now, but he did live in the States for a while. And I heard him, he was playing with Ben Monder and Satoshi on drums, and they were playing this fusion of Colombian music and jazz. And, and it hit me that, wait a minute, I can do it from the other way, because he's a Colombian meshing his music with jazz, but I can be, the person from the United States coming to Colombia and saying, hey, I love what you're doing, teach me. Mm. So while I was there in Colombia, I, I had all these friends, like the friend who invited me to his place to go vacation where I wrote Isto Luna, mm. um, who, who taught me and I would like hang out and play percussion with people mm. and learn about the styles. And I feel like that during the, um, the early 2000s, that was kind of like the cutting edge of where jazz was going, was mm. like fusing Indian music, fusing Latin music, uh, taking music from the gypsies and, and like combining that with jazz because there was new vocabulary. Yeah. And because I was actually living there, I was immersed in it. You go on the bus, you hear it. Right. You know, you go to visit somebody and you're dancing to it. Mm. So there was this permeation, this, the culture of Colombia, is it, it surrounds you with music, it embraces you with music. Everybody is just, they know all the songs, they sing along together. That's Whenever great. you go to somebody's house, there's always a guitar. Yeah. So I felt that because I was being so welcomed and embraced in that music, mm -hmm. that, that I wanted to pursue it a little bit and then take what I could add to it, the jazz element, yeah. and, and then meld the two. I think you've done that. So Thank now you. um, you're the director of the Vermont Jazz Center. That's correct. I wanted to just could share with us what your mission is as director. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I I love what we're doing here in this in Brattleboro because we're we're introducing people to a kind of music that they wouldn't necessarily be exposed to. So for me, my prime mission here is to bring joy to people to say, hey, this is a fabulous. Uh, opportunity that we all have to to get deeper into the music because it brings so much joy and healing to people. So uh, our, my first thing is to say, hey, listen, people, let's let's get invested in this music because the returns are immense, mm -hmm. and 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 the most the best way to do that is through the youth. Mm -hmm. So I also work at the high school. Rob Freeberg and I run the uh, jazz workshop there along with Steve Rice, and and we welcome the youth into our program. The, the youth at the high school who are in the music programs don't have to pay for our concerts and we have youth ensembles and so we bring people into the Vermont Jazz Center to to show them that jazz is something that's not just an obligation nor is it elitist it's something that they feel welcomed 
to participate in. Oh, yeah, that's so great. I would say that's my focus. That's great. That's, that's a jazz so we're going to go to the next video clip. Okay. Now. This is a piece of yours, an uh, arrangement for five horns yeah. called Bembe. And Bembe is a um, rhythm of right. the Yoruba people. Right. It's also the name of a people in Congo. Uh -huh. So but I'm wondering if that influenced the music that you wrote. Absolutely. Well, I took the basic bembe rhythm, mm -hmm. which is, as you know, a 6-8 rhythm. And, and I wrote a melody on top of it. Mm -hmm. And just and I was heavily influenced by musicologist and friend Julian Gerstner. Ah, Julian. You know, he was introducing me to this particular rhythm, and I was enamored with it, and I wanted to learn it better, so I said, I'm going to just write a tune. That's how we do it. And so <laughs> I took the, 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 the rhythm, and I wrote a melody that fit along with it and created a structure. And this particular version is, like you said, five horns. So yeah. I had written this piece as a lead sheet for you know however many horns could play it. But the the version that you're going to hear now includes this arrangement that gets into kind of uh, a shout chorus okay. that includes like a, a written out harmonized solo nice. between the five horns. Nice. Well, let's go to the video and check sure. this out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience about what you're doing or future projects or what's coming up? Yeah. Um, I'm heavily influenced by the artists that come to the Vermont Jazz mm. Center. And each time that we bring an artist to the Jazz Center, I kind of. Um, I do some research so that I can have a conversation with them. Because you, have a, I, you have a radio show. I have a radio yeah. show, yeah. and I invite them all to uh, have a conversation with me on right. the radio. For example, last night I had a conversation with Donnie McCaslin. Mm -hmm. and, and so therefore I'm really uh, into like listening to podcasts mm. of them talking about their music. And right. I've been learning a lot about this and I want to encourage other people to get in get into this whole podcast world. It's amazing. But one of the things that that this has influenced me is in terms of my comp composing yeah. is uh, in the interviews a lot of people write about their composing process and that to me is fascinating because as a jazz musician i'm fascinated by chords yeah, yeah. you know i, I just right. love well, the way the chords fit together you've, you've got to be kind of right right <laughs> but in listening to these people talk about their composing process it's kind of like what miles davis's reaction was to bebop hmm. a lot of people are simplifying Mm. So that they can do what what we're gonna do when we improvise together in a free setting, mm. you know. So there's what I'm finding, and I'm probably going to be using as some in my next compositional journey yeah. is to create more spaces where people can be open mm. and 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 to get into just the communicative part of right. the music rather than being so locked into, oh, look what I can do over a two, five, one chord Here's the changes you and know? you gotta stay within the boundaries. Right. right, so I, I've just been interested now, my, my latest thing, although I'm still 
enamored with Colombian music and I will continue to yeah. to borrow rhythms from there and, and to try to uh, illustrate the forms there and uh, but I'm really interested now in, in other forms of composition I'm also interested in music as a healing force yeah I've, I'm finding that especially during troubled times like we're in now that yeah. people find that that music brings them solace but there's also some deeper meaning behind that yeah. why, why does it bring people right, solace right. why is it important I'm interested in that and I'm also interested in music as uh, a a voice for social change. Yes. So I think that we all have responsibility as musicians to use the music a as a means to get the word out that, that these causes are which are important to us because we're now public figures can also be important to other people and we can educate people about the importance of really big deal things. <laughs> I think it's so true. I, I feel I agree with every word you said about that. Yeah. Music for social activism, I think, yeah. is a really powerful vehicle. Um, I would like to go to the next video, okay. which is uh, Cumbia Dramatica. Okay. It's again with the Convergence Project. Right. And uh, um, I, I love this. This is a great tune. Um, why don't we just go straight to that? Okay. Cumbia Dramatica. Yeah, rocking out to that one. That's a good one. It makes you want to move. It's excellent, excellent. Good, thank you. So I want to thank you, Eugene yeah, it was a Human, real... for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. Well, I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much for doing this for me and for all the other musicians who are trying to get the word out. Well, we're so. doing what we can do here. Yeah. It's really awesome. And um, we're now going to go to the part of the show where we play some live music together. I can't wait all right. to do that. Let's do it's it. It's going to be lots of fun. Get into a little more World Fusion and... Who knows where we'll go All with right. that. Sounds All right. Good. Very good. Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. And um, hey, remember, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. <laughs>